with live action, you're directing an actor. You're not saying, okay, could you bring this eyebrow up uh, maybe two frames earlier and do this type of a gesture? Okay, roll it action. You know, like you're not doing that. You're saying, all right, we're going to take this one again. I need you to come around a little bit sooner and hit your mark. You know, you're not telling them how to act. In animation, you're discovering the performance with the animator. You're saying, you know what? I don't buy that physicality. I don't buy that he would do this gesture. Or you're, you're trying to discover the, uh, the performance with the animator. I want you to kind of take me back, I guess, to the beginning, which is uh, where did the animation first strike you as something you wanted to do? Well, it was kind of strange because, you know, a lot of people, they think, oh, I watch Disney movies and they, they love that. And, but it was a little bit backwards for me. I, my parents bought a Tandy computer, which is a very kind of cheap computer, and it had 16 colors. And I had one game that I used to play that they got me. It was called King's Quest, I think. <laughs> I, remember, and, I remember King's Quest. You, yeah, you yeah. Remember that? And it was, it was a storytelling type game. You know, it was not just a regular shoot 'em up game. It was you're kind of piloting a character through a world. And I wanted to understand how they made it. And so I, I would draw the back of the box covers and try to recreate the graphics using software. So I picked up a magazine one day, and in the back it said, Learn Character Animation. And I, I got recruited by Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers came up to the school, and they, they were looking for animators at the time, and, and they said, You know what? We like you not because you can draw really well. You're okay, but it's because you're trying to tell a story with this simple thing. And we see potential in you, so they stuck me at a desk, plopped down some Bugs Bunny model sheets, and, to, and said, Go for it. And I was like, What? What am I doing? I, I'm going to get fired. You know, I don't, I don't know how to do this. And so they really taught me about timing and, you know, comedy and, and that, that kind of comedic Warner Brothers timing, you know. When you were first looking at Pixar and a job, was it, is it true that they knocked you back because you were too cartoony? Yes. Yes. I don't know how you heard that. <laughs> I despise. Um, I know things. I did apply there. They kind of said, well, you know, your stuff is a little bit too cartoony. We're looking for a little bit more subtle acting and, and such. And so I thought, okay, there goes my chance of working at Pixar. I was bummed out. And I started doing little tests on the side and they happened to be little bugs picking up things. And, and then somebody saw that from Pixar and said, you know, you might want to send that up your stuff again. You know, we're looking for someone for a bug's life. Of all of the different Pixar characters that you've worked with over the years, who's the character you have the greatest affinity with? Well, I mean, a lot of people would, you know, say, well, Mike, you know, Mike Wazowski. Mike Wazowski. Just because he's kind of like one of my cousins. <laughs> you know, he's a back east kind of Bronx, New Yorker, and, you know, wise guy. And so it's almost like, you know, the acting comes very naturally to me because it's like some guy I went to school with. Mm, I know. You're a princess and I'm just a stable boy. Yeah! <laughs> Mom! What are you doing? You grab me paws in my bed! Were you kissing my hand? <laughs> no. And what about you with all your shedding? I don't shed. Really? The last couple of years, there was a string of Pixar movies that seemed to almost... You, they were almost guaranteed to make you cry. Um, I'm thinking particularly around about that Toy Story 3 up period. Was that an internal mantra that we now need to, to make everyone cry, or did that just kind of happen organically? Up, you know, I, I got to look at as an audience member, and I, I really, it's one of my favorite movies because I didn't work on it in a sense, and you see it as a, not an, an artist working on it. And that first, I remember seeing that first sequence in boards, and it was like, you know, you, you kind of get a knot in your throat, and it really, it always had that kind of heart, you know, and, and that's the great thing is that they're trying to do things, storytelling in different ways where you don't need dialogue sometimes or they're not afraid to to push it and try different things even if it's not going to sell toys you know like an old man and a boy scout isn't exactly you know you're not going to sell a gazillion toys but i i just feel like it's not a conscious decision to try to make people cry and obviously with toy story 3 it's about letting go of you know andy is you know going to college so there's got to be that moment of He's going to give them up, you know, and getting to that moment is, you know, 
I'm gonna tear make, up if you making, keep telling this story again. It's it gonna it happen. <laughs> yeah. Come on, let's see how much we're going for on eBay. I wanted to ask you about the secret office that you have. <laughs> Tell me about the lucky se office. the lucky seven lounge because this is my favorite Pixar story. Uh, well, it was a new building, brand spanking new, you know. And I walked into my office and there was a, a little hatch in the side of the the wall with a key in it, and so obviously. I unlocked it and looked in, and, and there was a huge kind of air conditioned vent with two s kind of areas to sit, it looked like. You know, it didn't really, it wasn't meant to be that way, but there, there was a surface. So I crawled in, and, it, and it's not like a tunnel that, you know, goes like, you know, 50 feet. It was, you know, you go right in. And so then I started, I said, oh, wow, this is cool. I vacuumed it out. I put a couple of, you know, faux fur, <laughs> a couple of airplane bottles of scotch, and I had some martini glasses, and then I invited a couple of animators in, and they were like, I put some Christmas lights up, you know. And then they were like, wow, this is awesome. And so we started hiding in there and having drinks. One day on Finding Nemo, um, Andrew Stanton was looking for me on a walkthrough with a group of people, and they said, where's Gordon, you know. And I was like, I peeked out, like, with, with the, you know, the, the glass of <laughs> martini glass, and then he's like, what the heck? And so he stuck his head in and he just, it blew his mind. Like he, he loved it. And, but then John Lasseter showed up and then Steve Jobs showed up. And then that's when it started to be a circus. <laughs> it was like Robert De Niro would come by. I was, I would always have, I had like a rear view mirror and you know, where I would look at my face for expressions. And so when I would look in the mirror, I would see like Steve Jobs walking down the hall with Tim Allen and just, you know, John. And I would, uh oh, you know, and then, hey, can we go into the lounge, you know? And, and so they would always go in, you know, it was so constant. And I would serve them drinks, and, you know, everybody from Buzz Aldrin to Salman Rushdie to Tom Cruise, and you name it, they've been in there. I've met so many celebrities, and it's been bizarre. I'm curious uh, what the feeling was like around Pixar when Steve Jobs passed away, because he was such an integral part yeah. of what made that company. I'm wondering what that was like. There's been, you know, a lot of, I've been there 16 years, so I've seen a lot of, you know, things like that that ha have been sad and losing people and everybody was just kind of quiet and, you know, you thought about it and it was just really like trying to remember all those times, you know, people went up and told stories about their experiences with him and, and that was really great, you know, it was a nice way of remembering just lastly, before I leave you, if you had to sum up what a Pixar film is in, in a single idea, what would it be? It's all about the story. You know, that's the most story is king, they always say, at Pixar. And it's also something that has heart and characters that you care about and really want to be with, you know, and see more of.